Hi friends, welcome to the channel or welcome back. Today I wanted to make a video about how getting a Kindle really changed my life and why I think anybody should get a Kindle. No matter if you consider yourself a bookworm or someone who's never picked up, picked up a book in years, I still think it's an amazing thing. It has truly changed my life. So a quick disclaimer, I will not be going over every single feature of a Kin the Kindle's feature simply because that's not my style of content. I'd rather talk about my favorite parts of a Kindle. I will, however, in the description down below, link down to one of my favorite YouTubers, Ali Abdal. He's made a really great video talking about the different Kindles, so you can choose which whichever one you want. And I would say if you're just gonna read, just get the cheapest one or splurge a little bit more on like Kindle Paperwhite. I would definitely say the Kindle is both amazing for if you're a slow reader like me or you read through, book, through books super quick, it is still such a huge investment to make. So one of my favorite parts of having a Kindle is it's so convenient. It is super light, you can have so many books on the Kindle without even having to worry about storage. It is also fantastic if you're like me and you hate bringing books on trips because that means you might have ruined them and that really hurts my soul. And it's also extremely small and light. It's smaller than iPads. And this is kind of like a random thing, but I definitely think you should get a cover for your Kindle just like you do for your phone. So a bedtime thing. I know this is kind of random, but this is a huge thing I do before bed. Um, everybody in their mum has basically said you should read before bed. You want to know why? Well, for a start, if you're not reading in bed, you're most likely going to be on your phone or you're going to be watching TV if you have one of those pesky bitches in your room or bedroom, whatever you want to see. And why do we not want to be doing this? Well, the simple answer to that is stress. You can get stressed by the tiniest thing on this fucking planet. You can get stressed by watching a YouTube video and envying the person's life. You can get an email from your boss or just a text message in general you really didn't want to get. I've gotten those in the morning where I've just been like, fuck my life and I don't want to get out of bed anymore. It's, it's truly amazing and we love it. No, we actually hate it. But whatever it is, it's gonna keep you stressed out. But whatever it is, it's gonna keep you awake and it's gonna stress you out. Of course, I definitely have days where I open my Kindle, I read on it for like two seconds, and I close the book and I fall asleep. That's just how it is sometimes. But sometimes I sit on, like, I can go through multiple chapters before I even feel tired. And that's wonderful. I will be like sucked into this universe, especially when you're deep into a book. It doesn't even have to be a fiction book, it could be a non-fiction book where you're really interested in the topic. Now one of my favorite features is the highlights and notes part. The Kindle has made it super easy to highlight notes. You literally just click and like drag and then you can highlight whatever you want in the book, whatever your mind feels like. And also I really like if a certain part has been highlighted by a bunch of people, it will show that like maybe 8,000 people have highlighted this section for whatever reason. You see it in fiction books too. Another feature I am super obsessed with is the dictionary and the translator. If you're like me and you're not a native English speaker and you only read English books, which is primarily what you get on the Kindle is primarily English books. So you don't really get a huge selection of Danish books unless we're talking about textbooks or um, any other language. I feel like they do have a good selection of like Spanish and German, etc. Now the price, like the price for the Kindle is pretty damn good, I would say so, for like the value you get in return. Like it's a very high value item, even if you do have to pay whatever the amount is. Also kind of back to one of my first points, which was convenience. It is, let's just say you talk with a friend who recommended you a book and it's gonna be fucking annoying to either go rent the book at the library or buy the book. You're still gonna have to go to the bookstore or buy the book online and wait. And it's also gonna be more expensive and it's really annoying if you don't like the book necessarily. It is so amazing. You can just easily go on the Kindle app and buy it. Also sign up for the membership, which I currently don't do because I'm not that much of a reader. I do read a lot, but it's definitely not like those people I watch who read like 
eight books per month. I maybe read two to three max. But that might change. Because especially because especially when I start getting hooked on a book, I read a lot, but also not. I would call myself more of a casual reader for sure. And if you're someone who uses Audible, you can also sync it with Audible. Now, I'm not personally the type of person to um, listen to books necessarily, but there is that cool feature because it is for Amazon. So if you do have the Audible membership as well, it can be synced up with that, which is amazing. It also has a headphone port and Bluetooth, so that's wonderful. It also has really good battery life. The one I have is the cheapest model. And yes, I've heard the other ones have better battery life. But to be honest, I maybe charge it one to two times a week and I don't even have to do that. I just do that just in case. You know, it's usually around like 60% and you do not need to charge it when it's at 60%. It's just a good thing. That's just how my brain works. This is not about the Kindle, but I do think you can still enjoy physical books. I love a good physical book. I will always love the smell of physical books. They're gonna be wonderful and I love having a book in my hand. But the convenience of this Kindle has just made my life so much easier. And I would definitely say it is so much more worth getting a Kindle that is specifically for books than having the Kindle app on your iPad or your phone because I feel like it kind of takes away from the experience like you're just reading on your phone. Plus you can also get really annoying notifications and it just distracts you and I don't like the screen size. And the Kindle also has like a really good layout so you can change the fonts and like the text is super customizable and wonderful. I love it. And if you have downloaded PDFs, you can't really do that, which is really annoying. But you also can do that. You can, it supports PDF files if you want to have your PDF files on your Kindle. I wouldn't recommend that for enjoying reading. That would personally just be for like extra reading or something like that. So I would just recommend buying the books or having the membership. But that's of course up to you. So I would only see, say that's the only downside, that it does feel a ton better to be holding an actual physical book in your hand. But it's so much better. I've read so much more on the Kindle than I did beforehand. Beforehand I it would take it would buy a book and I would read maybe a couple chapters and then I would give up. Also, I only read in English. I don't know if that has something to do with it, but I prefer to read in English because I like the language more and I don't really like the Danish vocabulary, but that's besides the point. But yeah, guys, that's gonna be it for today's video. I really, 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 really hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you all guys next time. Bye. Uh, also, if you can hear my cat, she's uh, purring a little bit. She's super adorable. And now she's biting me. Okay. Okay, thanks. So, yeah.